Hi, and welcome to this Fornaf Coffee Break. My name is René Brummel. I'm a product specialist at Fornaf, and I will be your presenter today. As this Coffee Break is live, you can ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question window. We will answer them at the end of the Coffee Break. Today, we're going to add temporary tables to your Business Central reports. In some cases, you need to dynamically create a data set for your Business Central reports. You may need to merge data from several tables, calculate values, or work with a complex data set. Some examples are getting VAT lines, lot and serial numbers, or data from web services. With Fornaf, you can now add temporary tables in a custom layout for a standard report. To get the data for these temporary tables, you can use standard Fornaf logic or write your own code. To demonstrate adding temporary tables, I'm going to use these steps. The prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step two, I will add a VAT line data item to my report. In step three, I will add a temporary data item for the item totals table. In step four, I will get the data for the temporary item totals table. Let's start with the first step. Today, I will add temporary tables in the Business Central on-premise server with the Business Central 2022 Wave 1 release. I have installed the Universal Code version of the Fornaf Customizable Report Pack and have executed the step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. Of course, everything I do today is also available on the Business Central SaaS environment. I also have the Fornaf Designer installed on my PC. The Fornaf Designer can be downloaded from the Fornaf website. The first thing we will do is add the temporary data item for which we have built-in business logic. At the time of this recording, these are only the VAT lines and the sales tax lines, but we will add more logic in a future release. So let's go to Business Central and go and play with our sales order report. Now what we have in these four and a half reports is we have the VAT amount lines and the VAT amount lines are always placed at the bottom of the report. Um, you, can't you can't move them because these are built-in data items, so you can't move them to anywhere else in the report. But now you can add a new VAT amount line data item. So I can just drag that into my report. And just type VAT amount line and hit OK, and that gets me a new VAT amount line data item in the report. And I can move that to wherever I want because it's a, a virtual data item. So I will move it to the top of my report and I will rename it to temp VAT amount line. And I'm going to set the temporary property to true, which means that this table now does not get data from the related table in the, in the SQL database, but it needs to be the data that, it, that is in this table needs to be calculated. Like I said, Fornaf has built-in logic to calculate the VAT amount lines, so we will use that. And to demo, of course, I need a few fields. So let's grab the standard VAT amount line fields and drop them into my report. Then all of my totals get added apart from the VAT base, so I'm going to add that one as well. which means I also need to add the VAT base to the total fields. So the totaling in a 4 and a half works the same for virtual data items and temporary data items and normal data items. You just add your total fields and your totals will be calculated. So I'll make it look a little bit nicer and preview the report. Of course, sign in first. And there we go. Now we have a new VAT data item at the top of our report, which gets exactly the same lines as the normal VAT data item. And that's because obviously they use the same code in order to get these uh, temporary lines. Of course, it may happen that we need to add a temporary data item for which we need to write our own logic. 
And in that case, the first step, of course, is to add the data item to your report. Now, in this case, and let me go back to 4NAV, I'm going to use a data item for a custom table. So grab a data item once again and drill down and let's find my custom table, which is the PTE item totals, uh, which is a new table that I've created specifically for this webinar. I'm going to hit OK. And then once again, I'll move it to the top of the report. And this is, a uh, this is a really simple table. It just has two fields. Let's set it to temporary first. It just has two fields. So if you look at it, we have the item number and the quantity field because I want the total quantity for all of the items in my sales order. So let's add these two here as well. So that's that done. Means that if I preview my report now, I don't get, looks like I have managed to not disable my, uh, uh, my code unit. So let's have a look at that in a minute. Um, but now I've got my data in my report. So let's close this. Let's move over to the, to the next step because in the next step we can write the code to populate the temporary table, which like I said, I might have missed to this, might have managed to not disable. Um, writing the code to populate the temporary table, you need to be aware that this event is only triggered for virtual data items uh, that you add to a custom layout. So if you add a data item to a reports AL file, either by creating a new report through the 4NAV designer or by creating a new report in VS Code, you need to write the logic to fill these temporary, te temporary data items in the AL file of the report. If you use a virtual data item, so if you have a custom layout for a standard report or a custom layout for one of your own reports, then you can use this 4NAV event to write the code to fill your temporary data item. So let's go and have a look at VS Code. Now in VS Code, I've got a really simple extension that has a couple, uh, two, uh, two AL files. I've got my PTE item totals and the PTE item totals just has these two fields, the item number and the quantity. And it has a function get from sales header where we can get the item quantities from the sales header. So it's really simple. And to be honest, it's something that you can do with a normal virtual data item in 4NAV as well. Uh, but we needed something simple to demonstrate this function. Of course, in the app.json, I have my dependencies to the 4NAV core and the 4NAV customizable report pack. Now you need to be aware that if you use a classic on-prem system where you use the 4NAV DLL, then the, uh, the event is in the customizable report pack. And if you use the universal code version of 4NAV, uh, either in on-prem or on cloud, then the event is in the 4NAV core. Then, of course, I've got my code to get the, uh, to fill my temporary table. And for that code, I'll run through this real quick. We have an event subscriber that subscribes to the code unit 4NAV temp table and the event on fill temporary table. This event has the report ID that calls the event. We have the child data item. We have the parent recref. We have a temporary recref. And we have, of course, a is handled variable. And inside this, re inside this code, um, I get my temp item totals table, which is my uh, temporary table that I'm trying to fill. I've got my sales header table, which is the header that is going to be calling this, uh, this data item. And the first thing I need to do, of course, is check if the event is handled. If it is handled, of course, I'm going to skip it. Then if temp recref number is not P PTE item totals, of course, I don't need to fill the table either. Or if the parent recref, so the recref that is the parent of the, of the new temporary data item is not the sales header, then of course my code can't do anything with it either. Then I'm going to set the, set the sales header table from my parent record, record ref. 
I'm going to set my type temp item totals from my record ref. I'm going to call my get from sales header function in my uh, temp item totals table. And finally, I'm going to copy my temp reg ref to my, uh, from my temp item totals table. And I'm going to set is handled to true, so nobody else is going to do anything with this event. Which means if you publish this to Business Central, we need to wait until everything is done. Let's have a look at the four nav reports and run the order. Which means that, once again, uh, we get the item number and the quantities, they get calculated based on whatever's in my invoice. Let's recap what we just did. The first thing we did was to add a temporary VAT amount line data item. We noticed that Fornav adds the records to this temporary data item automatically. When we added a temporary data item for our custom table, the records were not automatically added. We created a code unit that subscribes to the unfilled temporary table event in the Fornav temp table code unit and added the code that adds records to our temporary table. Finally, as I mentioned before, the event to fill the temporary data item only triggers when you add a data item to a custom layout. The code I've used obviously is available on GitHub where all of our Coffee Break code is. Let's see, we have no questions at this moment, so let's go and wrap up this Coffee Break. If you want to know more about 4NAV or if you want to download the 4NAV Designer and Converter, please visit our website. If you want to install 4NAV in Business Central Cloud, please visit the App Source. If you, and you can watch more videos about 4NAV or on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions about 4NAV, please email them to support at 4NAV.com. For a full list of upcoming and recorded coffee breaks, please visit 4NAV.com slash coffee break. Thank you very much for listening to today and goodbye.